Good evening. When I was asked to present the subject, I had to think. I come from Lebanon, and Lebanon we had wars, so basically we live with the peacekeeping forces. So we know the advantage and we know the disadvantages of it. If we look at the Charter of the United Nations, Article 1 and Article 2, it talks about the sovereignty of countries. Of course, there is a proviso in case there are reasons why the international community should get involved for humanitarian or for genocide, then they have the right to invoke Article 7 of the, of the Charter. Definitely, the, over the last 25 years, we have heard more of the so-called peacekeeping forces. Before, we used to hear about it, but very little used to be done. There are good reasons, as the general has said in Kosovo. I think it was very important to stop the atrocities and the genocide that was there. But on the other hand, we did not see much in Rwanda or in Darfur in Sudan. When we look at situations whereby it was needed to be done, like what happened in 2011 in, in Libya, but the decision by the Security Council was for humanitarian, then it turned out into a regime change. Remember, United Nations is a combination of five vetoes that have to work together in order to make sure that any decision can pass by the Security Council. When it comes to Palestine and Israel, we know the United States will all the time veto any decision that will be taken against Israel. But on the other hand, Russia is veto any decision that is going to be taken against the regime in Syria. So when you look at all of this, in principle, the peacekeeping force is important, but normally it's important after the fact that we had a conflict. The question is that, should we be encouraging peacekeeping or we should try to go to the grassroots of the problems before we get to the point that we have to have peacekeeping forces? When you look at the conflicts in the world, all the estimates that we have seen so far, different sources, they say that the war in Iraq and Afghanistan has cost between four to six trillion dollars. The conflict around the world costs $400 billion every year. Every year, there are at least 250,000 people that are being killed, not specifically for certain countries. Syria on its own today, we have in excess of 300,000 people that were killed. And as we all see, there was very little action that has taken place. Peacekeeping force is important. After the conflict in Lebanon in 2006, we ended up with the UNIFIL which I think Italy was very influential under the Prime Minister Romano Prodi, whereby he insisted that we should be doing something there. It's great. But I do not see the nation building part after a, key, a peacekeeping force is sent to a country. I'll give you an example about Lebanon. UNIFIL is doing fantastic, making sure that Hezbollah and Israel do not fight each other. But beyond the cosmetic side of trying to make sure that the inter-community will work together, we have not seen nation buildings that's going to happen. If we go back to the roots of the problem that we are facing in the Middle East, there are two issues. It's poverty, poverty, and fundamentalist movements. When we look at the world between 2000 and, uh, 2001, 2002, and, two, and 2008, the price of oil tripled, revenue tripled. The Middle East is a nation with about 40% of the world energy that we export, except the spendable income of the average Arab in the MENA region did not go beyond 7 to 8%. Now, how can you justify it to these young men and women that they have no jobs, but on the other hand, they have all the tools of the, public, of the, uh, of the, of the social media that they can compare themselves to other people living in other countries, especially the north side of the Mediterranean versus the southern side of the Mediterranean. I think the ambassador, of the representative of the UN said yesterday that we need 73 million jobs every year. Well, I'll tell you one thing about the MENA region, which is Middle East and North Africa. We need 100 million jobs over the next 10 years. When we see the wars are being conducted, even though we have the peacekeeping forces, Imagine part of that money that was spent on the Iraq and Afghanistan war, how many jobs we could have created. The average Arab, the average Middle Eastern, the average North African, they see that there is no job for them. 
In Lebanon alone, about 43% of the population is under the age of 30. We all know the fundamentalists, they recruit between the age of 18, uh, 15 and 28. Which means we are preparing our young men and women to be target for these fundamentalist movements in order to attract them because we're giving them nothing to live for. In addition, what we are facing in the region is that in, when it comes to public life, the percentage of people that are willing actually to go and vote is very minimal. Because most of these young men and women, they've decided there is no future for them, so they resign their role as citizens of the world, and they will allow the status quo to continue. In the old days, when problems used to happen in the Middle East, people would say, ah, it's too far away from us. I guess with what's happening now with the movement of the terrorists all over the world and coming back to Europe, especially now what we see in Iraq and Syria, there are 50,000 people that are under arms working for the extremists. They, they, the statistics say about 12,000 they come from Western world. Imagine half of them die. Some of them are going to come back. The question, do we want to tackle the problems in the source where it is actually generated, or we wait for it to come to our souls in order to react? When we talk about nation buildings, beyond the Marshall Plan, what have we seen that we went to war and actually we won the war and we tried to rebuild the nations? From this point, I think it's very important that we need, we would hope that instead of spending all this money into peacekeeping, which we see in the United Nations, I believe that the UN and the international community should try to see if they can divert some of this money to actual for political reforms, for empowerment of women and young people, in order to make sure to get them to be tied in to their country, rather than to start thinking of adopting ideas. In the Middle East, religion is a way out. But don't ever think that any of these religious movements, that extremists are different than each other. Whether it's called Al-Qaeda, whether it's called Muslim Brotherhood, whether it's called Nusra, whether it's called Daesh, at the end of the day, all of them, they use the text of the Quran to justify that their analysis of the text is the right one, and whoever is against them is an infidel, and you know, there is a justification to get rid of them. If we are going to be working together, my feeling is that we should divert some of this money that we're spending on trying to react to conflicts in the world by trying to invest it in the region where now it's becoming a trouble for all of us. The Middle East is a potential danger for the Europe. We are your next door neighbor. We have common water between you and us. We can actually drive from the Middle East to Europe. So it means we have to be very, very careful. And the worst thing that we have seen lately is that if there is no decision by the Security Council, we create something called the coalition of the willings. So either we have a United Nations Charter that it has to regulate everybody, or we can create our own charter every time we feel that we need an excuse to go after somebody. Let's look at a country like Yemen. Yemen is one of the poorest countries, is one of the most populated, about 25, 28 million people. And it was there for the last 10 years, after 9-11, the maximum that people were looking at Yemen, how can we use the Yemeni regime to attack Al-Qaeda by using the drones, but not to spend any money on the people? 14 years later, we know what's happening today in Yemen. And you go down the list everywhere. Libya, we went there supposedly for humanitarian reasons. We ended up changing the regime. Are the Libyans today better off or worse off than they were before the attack? Look at Iraq. Look at Afghanistan. So my feeling is that peacekeeping force is very important. We need them to be there. But let us work together to make sure to avoid the conflict so that we do not use the issue of peacekeeping force in order to justify the bullying of some big countries in order to achieve political gains and then by changing the definition from peacekeeping to, 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 to peace reinforcement, it means going to war under the auspices of that there is a UN cover. If we can do all of this, I think we have a chance. Nobody wants to die. All of this argument that we hear that there are parts of the world that they would like to die, parts of where they want to live, Nobody wants to die. This argument that people are willing to die, I don't think it exists. But we need to help them, to give them the reason to live, because there is a future for them and for the children. If we don't do that, we are really dealing with a time bomb. And my final point, I would say, I would hope that NATO 
and the UN will start thinking very seriously. 9-11 happened and we heard statements like, we want to destroy Al-Qaeda. We want to hunt them down. Now what we have seen in Nusra and Daesh in Iraq and Syria, we heard the word containment. Containment, it means there is no political decision so far to control fundamentalist movements. They are trying to be used in order to minimize the role of Iran by using Sunni arms versus Shiites arms. But let me tell you one thing. This conflict has been going on for 1,427 years. It's not going to go away. And my feeling, if we don't try to build bridges between these groups, then the whole region is going to be collapsed, and I don't think any, any of us would love to see that. My suggestion is that if we can come to a conclusion out of this conference, positive economy is to try to really deal with the root problems that we have. The root problem, what I've seen here in San Petriniano, is something which is very impressive. We in the Makhzumi Foundation, we've held 6% of the population of Lebanon in vocational training, microcredit programs and this, but I've not seen something like this, which is an integrated project. You know, you start from the, from the education, treatment, business, training whereby whoever is in this part of the facility ultimately will become a full partner in the society after they leave. I believe you've done a fantastic job. I think this project is something that we all have to support. But let us use what we are learning here to take it back to the conflict area, which is mostly the Middle East at this stage, because unfortunately, we are partners into this fight against extremism, against fundamentalist movements, because none of these actually have anything to do with Islam. I'm a Muslim, I'm sitting here with, in front of you, and I can tell you these do not represent us. Thank you.